In this problem, we have a quadratic function. We're going to find the inverse, but this every quadratic is not one to one. They're either a happy parabola or a sad parabola. And what we're going to do is cross out half the domain and describe the other half of the domain. And then once we've forced it to be one to one, we're going to find the inverse. So a few ways to do this, I'm going to graph this x plus three squared. Our base function b of x is just the x squared. So ignore the plus three. So there's our base function. We graph the x squared function. I'm gonna use a graph paper right here. Negative one, one, positive one, one, and zero, zero. So we get like this. The x plus three, so our function f of x is x plus three squared. So remember the plus three is a shift, horizontal shift, because it's done to the x. Plus three means you're gonna go left three. So our original, three coordinates were negative one, zero, and one. Our original three x coordinates are negative one, zero, one, so we're gonna shift them left three. Uh, let's go with the negative one, shifts to four, negative four, negative three, negative two. Okay, putting the three points in. Same three points, they're just shifted left three. And this graph looks like this. There's a y-intercept, but it's not really relevant to what we're doing here. I'm going to take the red and I'm going to throw out half of the domain. Now half, you can see negative three is where the vertex is. I could have used the vertex formula, I found the vertex. Uh, and I'm going to pick the left or the right half. So if I cross out the left half, I've restricted this domain. This is the restricted domain is negative three to infinity. That would be one choice and you can include negative three or the domain, handwriting is bad, uh, is negative infinity to negative three. And that would correspond to crossing out the right half of this. So either way, you're gonna get a one-to-one -one function. You can choose which one you want. I believe the question's set up to accept either one of those choices. I'm gonna go with this choice here, negative three to infinity. And we'll look here, we get that. All right, so find the inverse restricted to this domain. So remember there's three steps to finding the inverse. Step one is swap X and Y. And we have, now our original function is F of X, so I'm just gonna replace F of X with Y. You may be tempted to FOIL this because that's the way your algebra brain's been trained, but remember, if you FOIL it, x is going to appear twice. It will appear as x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 6x plus 3 squared is 9. If I'm trying to solve for x here, I've now put x in two places, so it's going to be harder to solve for x. Now, I did ignore swapping x and y, so let's do that right now. x uh, gets swapped in for y. y swapped in for x. All right, so that's step one, swap x and y. Step two, solve for y. Okay, so I'm just gonna rewrite. All right, so y has two friends. There's a plus three and a square. And when in doubt, go PEMDAS up. So addition, subtraction first, but it's hidden in parentheses. So we actually have to deal with the exponent first. So we're gonna unsquare. When we do that, remember, there's a plus minus. This plus minus is where our choice that we made over here comes into play. So I'm just gonna keep solving for y. So I'm gonna subtract three, negative three plus or minus square root x equals y. It's not okay to put plus minus in here. You have to pick one. And the one we pick needs to be consistent with the domain that we picked earlier. So the domain I picked is negative three to infinity, and remember, this is the domain of our original f, and the range of f inverse is the domain of the original function f. Remember your domain and range swap when you're looking at an inverse function. So our range of f inverse is negative three to infinity. 
So the smallest value in the range is negative three. So now when we look at this, the smallest output I want to get is negative three and then anything bigger. So that means I have to, remember square roots only output positives. So I have to pick the plus because uh, that'll give me the smallest output of negative three. And whenever I add any uh, square root value, I'll get bigger and bigger numbers. So we're choosing plus and this is our f inverse of x is negative three plus square root x. So let's go ahead and reveal that answer. That's the f inverse right there. Uh, they wrote it in the other order, but that's totally fine. They just put square root x minus three, doesn't matter, it should accept it either way. If I would have made the other choice right here, I would have chosen the minus and I would have had f inverse negative three minus square root x. So that would have been the other choice. And each, either one would be correct. I believe either one should be marked correct by this particular question.